I come bearing information from the Netherlands that is important for every group of people that claim to be great representation for all their groups, whether it be somebody who wants to be representation for the black people or the trans people, for the fat people, for the skinny people, from the people with one ear to the people with very voluptuously big bootays. It is important for you to understand, once you reach a certain threshold, those people who you claim to be a good representation for might look at you and they'll say, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I no longer look at you the same. I no longer look at you as relatable because you have now surpassed me in importance because you became a little bit too prominent and you started making money and you started getting deals and that is offensive somehow to me because I'm the bitter bitch who can't seem to get anywhere in life. Dylan Mulvaney, transgender who is an advocate or a representation whether that be good or bad for transgenders, apparently came out with a song and a music video and there have been various reactions to it, majority negative, and no, they're not coming from those mean old men, they're coming from women. As somebody who made a very conscious decision to title their book The Consequence of Girlhood, I like to chime in on why I think the new Dylan Mulvaney song is rubbing everyone the wrong way. But I want to start by saying this criticism that people have of the song is not terribly different from criticism both cis and trans women have expressed over Dylan's content in general. I think the song is very on brand for Dylan. I think there's a place in this world for lighthearted entertainment, but that can be very difficult when it's being passed off as an expression of a total group. Which kind of brings us to this total problem. I don't think most women think of girlhood as this magical place or memory. And it is one of those you kind of have to be there things. Like you kind of had to have come of age as a very young person who was feminine presenting to understand why a lot of our negative experiences growing up outshadow the good. Every woman remembers the moment that the innocence was lost. Or that is to say the moment where they realized that the world would always over-sexualize them or objectify them. Think that they weren't smart enough, that the world doesn't care about your concerns outside of the kitchen and what you can do for a man or mothering a child. I think when you take those concepts, you inflate them in cute ways, especially the thing about pick up my meds. Why are women picking up their meds? What has the system done to us? It has severely altered our brain chemistry to the point where we now need prescription help. And I'm saying this as a neurodiverse person who was born neurodiverse, right? I'm not saying that like systematic issues are the only reason people or women in general are depressed, but not laughing or giggling or we don't think it's cute that these issues exist. Like we might make jokes like about it, like Lexapro Barbie, but it's like coping, you know? Like, I don't, I don't think we've ever wanted to hold these things up on a pedestal and go, Look how cute this is. Even when we look at the, the way that Barbie approached this with humor, what was it like depression Barbie or something like that? It was funny because Barbie did the extra legwork of acknowledging the injustices and limitations of like what women experience in the real world. And I think you can't really take the lighthearted approach of like jokeifying or cutifying like the real problems that women face without also showing that like, oh, I understand the depth of this. And I think for the longest, the concern around Dylan that was not phobic because there's definitely so many like phobic people out there, like outside of the phobic issues that Dylan faces, the concern has been, does Dylan really understand what women are experiencing and the hardships and the oppression that we face or is this just like a cute escape which i just want to say i mean dylan is a trans person in america so no doubt she understands oppression and bigotry more than most people in this world so i don't think it's like an absence of understanding of what women are going through i don't think dylan is trying to make a joke of womanhood and girlhood on purpose I think Dylan is still trying to figure out the sweet spot between glorifying the parts of girlhood that deserve to be beautiful, that we deserve to celebrate and delight in and kiki, and how to not allow that to come off as kind of putting girlhood or womanhood into a box. Is, is that the best way to say it? Like people just want to know that Dylan gets it. Like it's funny, but in a dark way, Dill, stop. <laughs> it's like, please don't do that. Like girlhood is, you know, it, I mean, for every individual person, it's whatever you want to make it. But as aforementioned, when I decided to write my book of essays, I very intentionally used the word consequence, the consequence of girlhood, because I feel like so much of who I am 
is a product of railing against the box that girlhood or growing up coming of age aka or how society grew me to be like it was in spite of all of those things it was like i had to fight to become who i am in spite of what girlhood tried to teach me i think people just want to see that that side of it for dylan and dylan's gonna have a unique story there because because of her background and so again it's not that there's any right or wrong expression of womanhood it's going to be different for everybody depending on their background racially ethnically their nationality their religion their sexuality like womanhood's always going to be different from each other's perspective but there are these things that unite us from like we have a common enemy and i think people just want to feel more like dylan is like in cahoots with them when it comes to like pushing against systems and stereotypes and all the things that limit us but yeah that that's that's what i think i think people just feel uncomfortable with the way that dylan presents this material as is this is all there is not this is a part of it but like this is all there is and i think that just could stand to be more communicated. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney, the man that's been cosplaying as a woman for the past two years, just released a new song that's about girlhood. Apparently to Dylan, a man, girlhood is prescription drugs, being lazy, retail therapy, and one night stands. A pretty typical sexist view that a man would have of women, if you ask me. I know that I'm not the only one that's sick and tired of how women are being portrayed on social media and in Hollywood. The same people that encourage people like Dylan to live out their womanhood are also the same ones condemning the movie Cabrini. That is about a actual woman who did good in the world and is a good example as to what womanhood is. Cabrini is now playing in theaters and the only way that we can start making a change is by encouraging these movies that are good examples of what women should be. I think the funniest one though is an individual who I believe is trans letting you and I know that Dylan Mulvaney has lost all this prospect and lost all this fanfare because she's white and rich. The trans person, I need you all to understand that Dylan Mulvaney seems like so far removed from the reality of being a, a woman, not because she's trans, but because she's rich and white. That's why what womanhood is to her is so unrelatable to you. It's because she doesn't live like the rest of us. She's massively wealthy and her coming out as trans is what kind of helped shoot her to that wealth. I mean, she lives in a multi-million dollar pink Barbie mansion in California. Like, most women can't even even dream of attaining that, you know? Um, so, like, I'm not criticizing the way that she views womanhood. I'm saying that it seems so out of touch because rich people are out of touch because rich white women are incredibly out of touch with reality. She's not going to work every day like most people. You know what I'm saying? Like, her life is that song because she is rich and white that's it that's the end of the story you can wrap up your transphobic takes about this song it has way more to do with class and race and everything, anything else but once a trans person does something stupid and out of touch it automatically becomes about their transness because trans people can suck too trans people can be stupid rich people too um and I'm not even saying, like, I hate the song, I hate her, I hate the way she views womanhood. It's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying the out-of-touchness that you feel from that song is because of, is more because of wealth than anything else. That is, rich people live in a different world than us. They really do. And that's just her life. I mean, good for her that her life gets to be, like, shopping and parties and shit, like... I didn't know all that oppression and guilt and stagnation and criticism immediately goes away once you start getting money in your pocket and you're no longer viewed as a legitimate representative because apparently even though you're trying so hard you still got that skin color that means you're a supremacist you still got that skin color which means you are somehow more supreme than the next person and I feel like if we're going to go based off that logic we're going to have to understand many people are not going to really side with anyone at this point because if you have all these people who are supposed to be viewed as good representation again is good or bad not really certain because i don't really keep up with dylan Mulvaney. all i know is the motherfucker got a beer can and that sparked a whole different controversy if you look at somebody who is representation and they've done all this work to make sure that there's a positive spotlight and then you yourself get mad because that person is getting more attention in situations than you that's not their fault it's your fault for being the bitter loser who's upset that the good representation is somehow not reflecting on you hi there so in the middle of me editing this video dylan 
Dylan apparently responded to all the criticism. And yes, she, motherfuckers somehow spins it as, how come you motherfuckers don't get mad at cis people for doing things like this? Hi, this is Dylan Mulvaney, the artist behind the song Days of Girlhood, which is currently going viral on this app for most of the wrong reasons. And I usually feel like art should speak for itself, if you can even call this song art, but I do think you deserve some context on this one. And I'll also say the fact that both conservatives and liberals would probably agree that this is potentially the most annoying song in the history of ever was no small task. Now, here are the facts. Number one, was not trying to change the world with this one. Number two, my comps for the song were Rebecca Black's Friday and Perfect Day from Legally Blonde because I really wanted it to feel like the opening of like an early 2000s rom-com because I never saw myself like existing in that world when I was growing up. And number three, I'm not act was not trying to like make a substantial music career. This was like a fun project to sort of celebrate the early days of transition and the joy that I found because so much of my series and my personhood got used against me by really extremist conservative media. And I wanted to find a way to like find the fun and the joy of of those initial moments that I had in my transition. And I think so many of the people that follow me on this app over the past two years have seen me grow and evolve so much to know that I don't think that womanhood or girlhood is chalked up to be these like silly frivolous things. And if you broke up the lyrics, like a Shakespeare monologue, like Monday can't get out of bed, Tuesday morning, pick up meds. Personally, I'm not about to have y'all sit through somebody read their own lyrics to try to explain to y'all as if that somehow makes the criticism any less valid because you have a myriad of women who are going to sit here and tell you that your song, while in your mind might be catchy and cool and quirky and a fun time, and it might be a ripoff of Friday, which is one of the worst songs ever produced and probably is the reason why there's a lot of white guilt in the world, you cannot sit here and try to diminish the real criticism towards you, which is women are pissed off that you kind of made their life growing up into an adult as some rainbow sunshine type of thing when it is not because doing that is a disservice to real women and how they go through life and their journey of adulthood or womanhood. Dumb lyrics. But I still think we should be allowed to enjoy those things. And I could have probably written a song about my pain or my trauma, but I didn't want to. I wanted to write a fun song. Like, girls just want to have fun. I mean, maybe I'm just spitballing random ideas here, but if you made a song actually about your trauma and the struggles you've gone through and all the issues you've had to deal with, maybe people would have found that more relatable than you trying to paint a very broad brush over womanhood and what women have to go through as they're growing up. Because let's be honest, what you did was an insult and a slap in the face. It really wasn't anything quirky, cool, and fun. By all accounts, the fucking song was annoying and i've seen comments too they're like how could she release this after the barbie movie and all we've learned in feminism well i love the song what was i made for from barbie movie that's like my favorite movie barbie but sucks make what about a the static song shock that movie opens the the movie or um dance the night away i feel like my song's more like those songs and if a cis pop star came out with one of those songs i don't think it would have had this negative of a response people it really is a bold strategy to get on camera after being criticized by actual women about your song disrespecting them and say if a cis person made a song like this nobody would care when the last four years of music has been criticized by damn near everybody for how shitty it is but okay cool story bro to get to the point over the past few years on this app, so much of what I put out there has been sort of towing this line of trans joy and humor and comedy and versus satire and parody. And I think we as a society is trying to figure out right now, like, what are trans people entitled to speak about or sing about when it comes to identity and womanhood or manhood? And why does it make us feel so uncomfortable when they do things that every other cis person is doing maybe and i'm truly just spitballing ideas at this point maybe you don't make a song that disrespects a group of people who have to grow up and then see you making fun of them in your quote unquote joyful and parody style. Sorry, everybody doesn't get the same proportions of meal at the table. Somebody gets the big piece, other people get the medium, others get the small. You gotta pick which one you really wanna have at the end of the day. And if you can't handle that, starve to death because no other option is really gonna work out, especially with you narcissistic type of people who always wanna hope for change, but then when it happens, you don't 
get what you want and you feel as though the world owes you a favor. No, being mad that this music video garnered attention or that Dylan Mulvaney is somehow getting more traction and is popular is nobody's fault but the audience of people who either like or criticize him. That's it at the end of the day. And you being mad about that says more about you and your ability to get people to like you than it says about other people. And I wish you well in trying to understand that all that shit you spouted was stupid. But in the meantime, let me know, did you watch this Dylan Mulvaney music video? And if so, what's the opinions? I didn't watch it because the music has nothing to do with me. And honestly, I don't have time to watch something that I'm not interested in. I just want to focus on watching old reruns of Arthur and Codename Kids Next Door and The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. But subscribe to the channel. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.